Good morning, church. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. We are so excited that you're here today with us. We're one hour early because we have two services, 9 and at 11 o'clock, because we want to make sure we fit everybody into our service. Um, we do have Easter egg hunts after each service today. Uh, so come on down and be a part of the celebration of He's risen. He's risen. And we're so excited um, to celebrate this day with you. We um, had a great Good Friday service, and so if by chance you were not here and you missed it, um, you can rewatch it on um, YouTube. So join us there. Join us um, on all three platforms that we have. If you have never downloaded our Cornerstone app, please do so. It's Cornerstone Christian Center Antioch, and um, everything that you want to know about what's happening at Cornerstone is on the app. Um, it's amazing. It's been um, updated and Pastor Nehemiah has done a great job doing that. So I'm going to look at the app right now and give you the update. So if you go to what's coming, you can see everything that's um, going to be coming up in the next month. And also if you go to media, the tab on the bottom, you can go live from your home or if you're traveling right now um, on the road in your car you can tune in with us. It's such a great thing to have uh, media now where we can be there even though we're not in the house, <laughs> although we would love for you to be in the house. So what do we have coming up? So we have worship night. It's the first Saturday, uh, or excuse me, the first Sunday of every month from six to seven. It's a great time to be in the house with the Lord and worshiping together. And we want you to be a part of that. Life track is coming up. If you've been with the church for a while or you're brand new and you've never gone through life track, it's a great thing to be a part of that. You get to hear the history. Do you know that this month is 30 years of ministry for Cornerstone Christian Center, which is so amazing. We're so grateful that God has sustained us all these years. And so you want to hear the history of um, how we got started and um, be a part of life track. You can sign up there. Um, the men's retreat is coming up next month. Men, go ahead and sign up. Bring your son or your nephew or bring yourself. They're going to have a great time together. And so I hear the band um, getting ready to start, and I want to make sure you get down there right when we start worshiping. So I'm going to pray and um, close this out. Father, thank you for today. You have risen. Thank you, Father, for your gift of dying on the cross and rising again so that we can be saved and so we're grateful for today and we're ready to celebrate you in jesus name amen happy easter resurrection sunday would you clap your hands come on let's get excited for the presence of god i was
it wasn't for him on that cross, where would we be? He's our Savior. He's our Lord. Let's declare it together. I need. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. But you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love. Myself. My name is Pastor Steve. I'm one of the pastors here at Cornerstone. We are so glad that you came to join and celebrate with us today. We believe that God has something in store for you, and you are going to, like the song says, hear him call your name today. Man, we've got a, a lot of things going on, uh, one of which is man, we've got a, a, a mission team leaving tomorrow morning for the Dream Center in L.A. You're going to meet needs down there. Over 20 people uh, are going down. And so, man, this week, if you can remember to just pray for that um, and, and uh, pray for them, uh, they're going to go and serve. Whenever you go to something like that, man, you always come back more filled than you feel like you gave out and something like that. So just, just pray for them as you think about it this week. I also want to uh, let you know, if you are with us for the first time, we've got a gift card out in the lobby for you. So there's a Dutch Bros card. So you go out there, one of our friendly people will get you your Dutch Bros card. Uh, it's just an expression that we're glad that you came. And we want to welcome you back next week. Next week we all meet here, all of us, the whole family, all together, 10 a.m. Hope you'll be here. But right now we get to celebrate in song. And so we've got a scripture verse that we're going to pop up and read just to, to get us ready and set the tone for today if that song didn't already do it for you. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Today is your first day. We want to welcome you, like Pastor Steve said. This is a new song for a whole church. I just want to declare a new song, Christ and Christ be crucified. We think of Christ, but he also was Christ crucified. And let's just think about that moment, just like we did on Good Friday. Our Christ has been crucified. The wages of my sin was
thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Sacrifice everything. Death couldn't hold you down. Hell couldn't steal your crown. There's resurrection power in your name, in your name. Let all the earth cry out. Lift up a holy sound. Give all the glory now to Jesus' name. shout hallelujah because of what you've done for us Jesus we look to the cross but more importantly we look to that empty tomb Jesus and we'll never forget it thank you thank you Jesus and see on the hill of Calvary my Savior bled for me Set me free and look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side. No greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory. future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done. And sing for the freedom he has won. Even death is dead and done. His life is over. Oh, 
more time. Let's sing it together. All hail. All hail, King Jesus. for my sin. Friday as we contemplated the cross, oh, the weight of my sin was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. But you rescued me, Jesus, and you rescued us. Celebrate an empty tomb today. Thank you that you didn't stay on the cross. Thank you that you conquered death. Thank you that you were willing to take on the sin of the world. Thank you that you didn't stay dead. Thank you that I'm speaking to a God who hears my cry, that's alive forevermore, that death has to bow to the name of Jesus. Thank you that we have hope in the name of Jesus. I have hope in the resurrection of my Savior, my Redeemer, the one that paid the price for my sin. So I can joyously say today, thank you, King Jesus. Oh, thank you, King Jesus. Thank you that my Redeemer lives, that you paid the price, that I don't have to walk in sin and shame no more, that you came out of the ground, that you resurrected, that you live and you are seated at the right hand of the Father right now, and that you're interceding for me, me and us today, that Jesus, that you are the way that God sees me, by your precious blood that paid the price, that washes me white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. Father, you're good and you're kind. God, I pray this to this week as we send a team down south. I pray that your spirit would be so powerful I pray that the name of Jesus would rule and reign this week I pray that your name would redeem that it would buy back that would save those people that we're going to go minister to I pray that they're for protection I pray that the vans would work wonderfully and they get them down and back I pray that whatever their hand would touch would be blessed in the name of Jesus we trust you Jesus Thank you that you rescue us. We celebrate our King today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't leave us alone, that you sent us the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit, I invite you into this place. I invite you into my heart, man. Any, any part of my heart that is hidden, I pray you would reveal it. I want to be like you. I want to walk in your goodness and grace, Holy Spirit. For our people, I pray that the Holy Spirit would be so sweet this week, so real this week, that we'd be people of peace, of kindness, of joy, supernaturally, that people would know that we're different because of you, Holy Spirit. So we celebrate you. We worship you today. Thank you that you went to the cross, Jesus. Thank you that we were willing unto death. And thank you that you conquered death for me today. In your name we pray. Amen. If you'd put your eyes to the screen. We have some video announcements. Happy Resurrection Sunday. These are your morning video announcements. Hey, if you're new and you want to get involved here at Cornerstone, Life Track is where it is at. It'll be starting the 14th of April. We want to invite you. Pastor Steve is going to be leading the first and I'll be leading the following week. It's a two-week course about our church and how you can get involved and make a difference today. Then the following week, we're going to be doing baptisms. Jesus wants all of us to be baptized, so we want you to be obedient to his call. If you've never been baptized or you have maybe when you were younger, sign up today on the website and we are excited to celebrate your salvation with you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Our next series that Pastor Steve and Pastor Nick are going to be diving into is called This is the Way. We want to invite you to join us these next few weeks as we dive into what is the way of Jesus Christ. Also, the men's retreat is coming up. We need you to go on the website and sign up. It is going to be a blast. And so we want you to go on the website, sign up today so you don't miss out. And finally, next Sunday is worship night, 6 p.m. We hope you'll join us. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Android users, our app is available now online, so you can join us by downloading the app today. All right, Cornerstone, these are some ways that you can know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. That's it for your morning video announcements. All right, you Android users, I'm one of them, and I actually downloaded it, and it did work, so... Uh, I am excited about that. Um, once again, happy Resurrection Day. Glad to have you with us. Um, I, if you're anything like me, uh, you've probably heard a lot of Easter sermons in your day. In fact, this is the, the fifth one that I get to give. Um, but I've heard a lot of them, and, and a lot of them uh, revolve around the theme of the great comeback. It's a great comeback, and we're Americans, and we love great comeback stories, uh, and, uh, you know, we love Rocky, and we love Rudy, we love Rocky so much, they made like five or six of them, and, and uh, so I found a video that uh, I think best describes the unexpected comeback of the resurrection, it's like 20 seconds, and I want us to just uh, kind of watch that uh, as we get going here, we got, this is it, make or break, oh man, here, this guy's like the devil, the goalie. He's the disciples for Friday, Saturday. But wait, what happens? Check that out. Look at this. They win the game. I mean, they look at the disciples, man. They didn't, don't know what to expect. The devil, look at him right there. He's all disappointed. And I just think, man, that is the comeback. I mean, this is, man, they, they thought it was going to be one way. I mean, the disciples, they didn't see the crucifixion coming, and they certainly didn't see the resurrection coming. So it's a great comeback. But, hey, the deal is, I'm not talking about a great comeback today, but I, I just had to throw that in because I just love that video. What I'm talking about is he called, he is calling your name. That's what we're going to talk about. That's the title of the message today. And I, and I know some of us are here, and I could just tell by walking in the room and in our, our uh, beginning of uh, the, the worship set was just, you know, you are ready to come and to celebrate uh, the risen king. You came ready for that. And, and yeah, there, there you are. Uh, but then I know there's some of us here, um, and you're like, you know, I'll tell you the truth, Steve, I'm not really much of a Jesus person. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not that much of a church person. And, uh, you know, just to, to be honest with you, I'm not, not, not a Bible person. And, and that's okay. I, I just want to say, again, welcome. We're glad you're here. And my hope and prayer is that soon you'd find a home 
here because you need a spiritual home. You need a spiritual family. And so, um, but uh, there, there's, uh, uh, I just want to uh, get us into this. And my guess is if you and I, in that second category, if we, after uh, service or maybe went out to, to lunch or something, we, we talked about, you know, why you're not a, a Christian and why you're not following Jesus. You could tell me some things. And, and I, if I heard your story about what's been done to you, what's been said to you, what's been said about you, I might very well agree with you. I'd, I'd probably say, yeah, I get it. I, I, I fully understand. But if you would give me one shot, just to try to convince you to maybe just be open to the possibility of being a Jesus follower. Just, just maybe that you would consider for a moment. Um, what I wouldn't start with is defending the history of the church. Wouldn't start with that. I mean, I, I, I think the church is the, the greatest thing going. Um, but, but, I mean, we've got some dark moments. Uh, we've got some, some nefarious characters and uh, so I wouldn't start with that. I wouldn't start to defend uh, the things that Christians have said or what they've done uh, or even what they are currently saying or what they're, they're doing. Uh, if you gave me one shot just to convince you about the reality of the resurrection, um, uh, it, it would be that event. I'd talk about that event, the event that we are celebrating today, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, when he rose from the dead... The disciples, his friends, they did what you would have done if you watched your friend be murdered and then buried, and then a few days later, you had breakfast with him on the beach. You would go out, you couldn't keep your mouth shut about it, and that's exactly what happened with the disciples. I mean, they went out and they told everybody about it. They talked about it. They wrote about it. They, uh, they, they witnessed it. They believed it. They gave their life to sharing the story uh, about it. Uh, in fact, we have four historical accounts that are written down for us. Matthew, we read that in the, the beginning of service, part, part of his account. He witnessed the whole thing. He was an eyewitness, and he believed it. And then we have uh, Mark's account. Really, Mark's account is Peter's account. Peter dictated it to Mark, and he wrote it down. And Peter saw it. He was an eyewitness, and he believed it. And then we have Luke. Now, Luke, many uh, uh, historians think that he was commissioned by a man by, named Theophilus to write uh, an orderly account of all the things that had happened so kind of kind of prove it. So uh, he was a doctor, and he went and methodically, thoroughly checked it all out, and he believed it, although he was not an eyewitness. And then John, which is what we're going to hang out in today, John chapter 20, he was an eyewitness, and he believed it. But I think maybe the most compelling person of all is James, because James is the half-brother of Jesus. Now, any of you that have a brother, what would it take for, for your brother to convince you that he was God? What would that actually take? So listen, uh, 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 while Jesus was alive uh, uh, pre-resurrection, James was not a follower of Jesus. It wasn't until after the resurrection he became a follower of Jesus. And not only did he become a follower of Jesus, he became a leader, one of the leaders in the church. And he, he wrote a letter. It's one of the books in, in our New Testament uh, entitled James, of all things. But even in that book, he clearly articulates that Jesus rose from the dead. But it's not only those guys that have kind of a vested interest that are real close 30 years after the resurrection, all the way 1,500 miles away in Rome, Nero, Emperor Nero, for some reason, he sets Rome on fire and burns it down. I guess he was having a bad weekend or something. And uh, then he realizes, I, I'm going to have to blame this on somebody. So he blames it on the Christians. And, and the point of me telling you that is, how can he blame it on the Christians? Because the Christians were there, 1,500 miles away. Uh, uh, 30 years later, there's enough Christians there to put the blame on them. Uh, in fact, historians will tell you there was, by that time, hundreds of thousands of Christians, not just in Judea and in Jerusalem, but it spread all over the Mediterranean Rim, all the way to, to Rome. And so uh, Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, there's, there's, it, it spread like wildfire all over, right in someone's lifetime, 30 years we're talking. There's historical documents you can look up today that point to, at the very least, uh, the massive significance of the life of Jesus. Uh, it, 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 it's there. And, and people like Tiberius, Julius, Africanus, Phlegian, and by the way, if you're looking for baby names, we've got a couple good ones there, um, they, they 
they all confirm things that happened at the crucifixion. They talk about, and again, these aren't, aren't Bible guys. These are just historians. They talk about how in the middle of the day, the skies just went dark. Unexplainable. They, they talk about that there was an earthquake, that the, something in the atmosphere shifted. And these are just historians, uh, and, and they confirm those things. There's a second century Greek philosopher named Celsus. He was the first opponent of Christianity that really went to research and, and wrote some things down. He, he wanted to, he did this comprehensive uh, attack about how the miracles of Jesus, he just used magic tricks. And so here's the point. They all knew about Jesus. They knew about his miracles, and they're trying to disprove it. So there had to be a Jesus who was doing miracles that they had to sit and try to disprove because they hated uh, the, the, the way. They hated these, these Christians. But even these people that hate it, they're identifying aspects of our faith. Like there was miracles that were done. Other people write about how the, this community of people, uh, they call it the way, how they, they loved each other and how they loved the community around them and how they cared for the sick in the needy, and it was those. And, like, they didn't say it like it was a, a paradigm of virtue. Like, it was a, like, they thought, these people are ridiculous. You know, in Rome in those days, it was survival of the fittest. And so these people prove it. So here's, here's the point today. We're not here to simply gather and celebrate the facts about the resurrection. That's not what it's about. What, what we're going to talk about and, and celebrate today is the implications of the resurrections. What, the resur what does it mean to us in 2024? And how should it and how, how affect our lives? Because it should affect our everyday life. If it doesn't affect your everyday life, I say, well, maybe you're not a fully devoted follower of Jesus. Because the tomb is actually empty. Jesus rose from the dead. It's just not some uh, songs we sing. It's not just some ticket to heaven in the by and by later at some time. It affects the way we treat our spouses it is uh, the way we treat our children, uh, the way we use our money, our recreation, our entertainment, our time. It affects all of those things if it's really true that Jesus rose from the dead. It changes everything about our lives. And if everything hasn't changed little by little in your life, then maybe you should take a pause and reflect on that. Paul said it like this, if Christ has not uh, been raised from the dead, then all that we're doing is just useless. It's useless. And maybe you're here today and you think, ah, oh, Steve, my faith kind of is useless. It really hasn't made a big difference in my everyday life. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. You know, I show up to church when I can. I'm trying to be good. Uh, and, and, but I haven't really seen much difference in my life. Paul uses real strong language saying it's useless. And I agree with Paul. If Christ has not been raised from the dead, then our Bible studies, it's useless. Our small groups, useless. Our mission trips that we take and support financially, man, it, it's useless. In fact, quite bluntly, what we're doing here today, I mean, it's a nice room, it's a killer band, we're going to feel good for a while when we walk out of here, but for the most part, it's just useless if Jesus hasn't raised from the dead. So apart from the resurrection, there's no Savior, there's no salvation, there's no forgiveness of sin, and there's no hope of eternal life without the resurrection of Jesus. And, and here's the truth. Apart from the resurrection, Jesus was a very good but a very dead man apart from the resurrection. So I want to share with you the story of the first Easter. We're going to be in John chapter 20, but what I want to do is set some context for it first. So ancient Jews, they believed sincerely that God was going to send a Messiah, and what he was going to do is he was going to restore Israel to its former greatness, the days of David and Solomon. And, and uh, so they believed that, uh, and, and, uh, but now it's been the fifth empire now that's been over them, and they're under the foot of Rome at this time, and it's generation after generation have kind of held on to this belief. Nothing's ever happened, and so kind of what they've done is made their own religious system, kind of just make up some rules, and, and uh, they, they kind of getting by. They're believing and waiting for this Messiah. You know, great-great-great-grandma talked about it. Great-grandfather talked about it. Everybody talked, uh, is it really going to happen? 
is it really going to affect our everyday life? And so they have this nice little religious system, uh, and, and, uh, but, but nothing is happening. And then all of a sudden, this new rabbi comes on the scene teaching people, because that's what rabbis did. They would teach. But this rabbi taught differently than all the others. It says that uh, he taught with authority, not like anybody else they had ever heard before. He said things like this, the kingdom of God is here. Not the kingdom of God is coming. It is here. And he calls on the carpet the hypocrisy of man-made religion. He says, when you see me, you see the Father. And that was radical in so many ways because uh, the, the Jews, they wouldn't even say a name of God, let alone the intimate phrase calling him Father. I mean, that just out of the question. Uh, he, he would do crazy things like he'd, he'd pull coins out of fish's mouths. I mean, just incredible. i got to go fishing. I'd love to have gone fishing with Jesus uh, one of those times. So the crowds begin to gather, but the authorities, uh, they're, they're a little skeptical about Jesus. You know, for one, their system that they've set up that really makes things really comfortable for them, not anybody else. In fact, it makes it hard for everybody else, but it makes it comfortable and easy for them. It's, it's a system they've set up to... Well, benefit themselves. The religious leaders of those times would be like political leaders in our time. They've set things up to benefit themselves. And so uh, they're, they're keeping a, a strange eye on, on Jesus, not quite sure. They're very uncomfortable because he's going to mess up their system that they got set up uh, that they really, really like. And then Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And that's it. Last straw. He's got to go. He's got to go. And so then he was betrayed by a close friend. He was condemned by the temple. He was crucified by the empire. And he was prepared for burial and placed, uh, sealed in a tomb. That was it. Game over, like the video that we saw. We have to remember, the resurrection didn't happen immediately. It was Friday. He's in the tomb Friday night. All day Saturday and a little bit on Sunday. I mean, it didn't happen right away. To Jesus' followers, hey, it's over. We, we're reeling. We're kind of running for our lives. And um, it's over. There, there's no message to preserve. There's no movement to move on. It's just, it's, it's over. Nothing to keep alive. They thought they were following a conquering hero. But really, he ended up just to be a crucified friend on Friday night and Saturday. They were expecting a Kim King claiming victory, but what they got was a cold and borrowed tomb. That's where they ended up. Uh, they, they were expecting to celebrate together, but really what they ended up doing was mourning alone. Everything they had expected in Jesus died that Friday afternoon. He's in the ground. Game's over. There, there was none of them waiting at the tomb. None of them wrote themselves in the story like a hero saying, hey, just send me the food because I'm waiting right here. I'm not leaving the tomb. You know, everybody else didn't believe, but I did. They didn't write that in their story. You know why? Because that didn't happen. Because they didn't expect that it was going to happen. Even though Jesus had told them, you know what they did? They ran and they hid. They hid for their own lives. And, and uh, the story doesn't end there. Here we go. John 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Now, Mary was a woman that earlier had had seven demons cast out of her by Jesus. Uh, I mean, he, she encountered Jesus, and Jesus set her free. Jesus delivered her. She is completely transformed. And so what does she do? She starts to follow him. She becomes a disciple, an apprentice, if you will, of Jesus, which was another radical thing about Jesus. Uh, 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 rabbis didn't let women follow them around, but, but he did. Uh, to, to steal a line from the TV show, The Chosen, she said it like this. Again, this isn't scripture, but I like to, to th think of it like this. This was Mary. I was once one way, now I am another. And the thing that happened in between was him. I just love that. Maria has a shirt with that, that saying on it. So, so Mary becomes one of his followers. And she just tells everybody, and wouldn't you, tells everybody about it. Listen, 
Hey, I'm Mary. Remember me from yesterday? Remember me from last week? Yeah, it's me. Can you believe it? I'm totally different. It was Jesus. And you should come and join us. I've been following him. And she just does that with everybody. Her life has been transformed. Uh, and, and she is beginning to believe it's true. He is our, our Savior. He is the Messiah. He is the one that we've been waiting for. And then everything on that Friday died. All those hopes, they were buried. She's heartbroken and she's devastated about what's happened. Uh, even though her heart's broken and her dreams are crushed, she, she wants to pay respects to this man who changed her life, that set her free. I mean, she has a new lease on life. All things truly have become new for Mary, and so she's like, I am legitimately different. But she has no idea what to do. In fact, I think if you put yourself in her shoes, I don't think any of us would know what to do in a situation like that. So uh, what does she do? She decides to go to the tomb. Uh, at least I can care for the body. So she goes, fully expecting. She takes some spices to find a body, to pay her respects, and to leave. But she arrives at the tomb, and he says she saw the, the stone, and it had been removed from the entrance. Can you imagine the things that are going through her mind? I can tell you one of the things that wasn't going through her mind. Resurrection. It's happened. He's alive. No, that's not what she thought. She, she didn't think that. She thought the body had been stolen. So she came running to Simon, Peter, and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved. Now, it's interesting that he puts that in there because this is John's gospel. This is his account. He's the one that Jesus loves. A lot of people think he was kind of doing that maybe to stick it to Peter a little bit. I was the favorite. You know, they were always, you know, kind of jockeying about who was the, who was the most important and who was the one he loved the most and who was going to have the highest position in his kingdom. But this is post all of that. I think it's amazing he puts it there because I think that's what John feels. I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. And here's the reality. He, I, I, I'm hoping and praying that you feel that same way to, today. Because it's true of you. You're the one that Jesus loves. I woke up this morning and I said, I'm the one. I'm the apprentice that Jesus loves. And it's true. And I hope you feel that same way too. So back to Mary. Mary sees an empty tomb. Uh, she's, she's not declaring resurrection, remember. Uh, she, she goes back to alert the, the disciples, all the, the guys. They're, they're hiding because they know, man, if the enemy came and they got Jesus, What's the next logical thing? They're going to come for his followers. They're going to come get his followers. So they're hiding. When Mary bursts through the door, she says, they have taken him. They have taken the, the, the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where they have put him. So Mary's no dummy. She knows that, hey, Jesus has all these people that hate him. She's got, he's got tons of enemies. And they would like nothing more than to take his body to, to desecrate the tomb because they don't want this tomb turning into some kind of shrine that people come up to later and then we worship this guy and keep this guy's memory alive. They don't want that. So like Mary, Peter, and John, they don't know how to make sense of this either. And so they run. It says they run physically. They run to the tomb uh, and they find it just as Mary said. And they're scared and they're distraught, and now they're out in the open, and, and, and they're susceptible to being caught. And uh, so they just, they see it empty, and they go back to the city. Well, Mary trails behind them, and she eventually gets back to the tomb, but she stays there. Uh, she doesn't know what to do. Just try to imagine her range of emotions that she's experiencing in this moment. And it says this, Mary stood outside of the tomb crying. She stood out there crying. Uh, it, I, I can just picture it. The last place that she saw her friend be put, and now he's not there. Thinking, God, how could this happen? How could you let this happen? I mean, he changed my life. He touched people in a way nobody ever touched people. He touched people physically. He healed people. He spent time with people that nobody would ever spend time with, and they felt loved. They just felt loved. People that never experienced it. God, how could you let this happen? Why didn't you come through? Has anybody ever been there? I've been there. I can't count the amount of times where I've, God, you let me down. I'm just angry. Well, how, how could you do this? Why would you leave me in the lurch like this? Like, what the heck, Lord? I mean, did I not pray good enough? 
okay, I broke my fast a couple of times. I readjusted. Lord, I, I, are you really going to hold that against me? What, what did I do wrong? Where are you? Did you lose my file? Lord, I need you. I need you to come through when you didn't. If you've ever felt like that, you're in good company. The Bible is filled with stories of people that cry out to God in confusion and lament and anger. It's all over the scriptures. So what happens next, though, so powerful. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Uh, she doesn't know they're angels. I mean, I think she's so distraught, she just doesn't, you know, doesn't even compute. Because everywhere else in the Bible, somebody sees an angel, whether well, they fall down in fear. And, and it doesn't even happen to her. It doesn't even compute that they're angels. And here's the kind of interesting. The angels say this to her. Woman, why are you crying? This is how we know that those two angels were men angels. Isn't that such a guy question to ask? Why are you crying? What? Are you mad at me? Is there something I can fix? You know, so here, listen to what Mary says, though. They have, uh, they have uh, taken my Lord away. He said, and, and I, I don't know where they have put him. And so she must have heard something behind her or something. And it says, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize it was Jesus. I, I don't know why she couldn't recognize him. Maybe it was still too dark. Maybe he was too far away. Maybe his resurrected body looked a little bit different. Or maybe her mind is just so confused and, uh, and, and everything that's going on. It's like I, I, her mind can't even compute. I'm talking to Jesus right now. So she sees him, but she doesn't recognize him. Get this. She turns back to the tomb. She goes back to the place of death. Man, isn't, isn't that what we do so often? Ah, oh, it didn't seem to be working out. I'm just going to go back to that place of death. I'm going to go back to the place that I got delivered from. I'm going to go back to the place. I'm going to go back there. And that's what happens with her. I think Jesus might have maybe a little bit, the scripture doesn't say, but I just kind of picture they had a little smile on his face. Because he recognizes, he knows that once again, her life is about to change in a radical way. And not just her life, but the whole cosmos. The world is about to change. Uh, the, uh, uh, and so uh, Jesus then asked the same question that, uh, that, uh, that, that the, the angels asked. He says, uh, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Uh, the uh, and so uh, John is kind of uh, setting this up. I think he kind of tells us the next part. It's, it's actually a little bit funny. And she said, thinking he was the gardener. So she's thinking he's the gardener. I wonder if, as she told this story as the years went on, she said, yeah, I was talking to him. She kind of giggles to herself, and just like, yeah, I thought he was the gardener, and I was talking to Jesus right there. Uh, and so there's this, this whole beautiful thing that John sets up, and this is, this is maybe next year's Easter message, but I just want to mention it because I think well, he, he draws this connection, this parallel from this garden to the garden back in Eden where, where uh, the, the fall happened. And John includes those little details. It's just awesome. So, so Mary thinks he's the gardener and asks, sir, if you've carried him away, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. I'll go get him. She just doesn't know. She's just desperate. Like, hey, gardener, you must have some kind of role here. You must have seen something. Hey, could you just tell me? Just please help me out. Give me this one thing. Come on. And then the most powerful thing. Jesus calls her name. Mary. Jesus calls the name of, of Mary. See, the hope that had died begins to get rekindled in that moment. It clicks for her. Oh my goodness, I know that voice. He's called my name so many times before, and I hear it. Here it is. Uh, and, and, and with that name, she puts it all together. She puts it together. She says, Jesus said to her, Mary. <clears throat> she turned toward him and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. It means teacher. She's overcome with emotion, she's overwhelmed. Suddenly, everything comes to life. As su suddenly everything in her life has changed. Everything in the world has changed. And then she gives, he gives her some instructions and tells her this. Go instead, go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my father and your father. To my God 
and your God. Again, so beautiful. In other words, hey, this time I want you to go back to the city and you got a different story to tell. Last time you told a story about how some thieves stole the body. This time I want you to tell them I have risen. Last time you went back and said, hey, that tomb is empty. Tell them it's because the king lives. The king of kings lives. So Mary goes back and she tells the disciples. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that they, uh, what, uh, that he had said these things to her. So he tells them that. And uh, check this out. The, th this is another amazing part that maybe we just read through and kind of miss. But it's a woman. It's women that, that he um, reveals himself to first, that are the first witnesses of the resurrection. Now, the reason that is so important, again, we, we go back to the beginning of what I was talking about. In the ancient world, a woman's testimony was worthless. A woman wasn't even allowed to testify in the court of law. And so uh, she, they had no credibility at all. And so when Jesus rises from the dead, he chooses to reveal himself to a woman first. See, if you're making up this story, if you're fabricating a story, and then you want people to follow this movement and make this movement like uh, something that's really going to be big, you don't start out by saying, uh, I've got some women as my primary witnesses. You don't do that because no one would take that seriously. But you know why all four gospel accounts say this? It's because that's what happened. That's the way the whole thing went down. That's how it went down. And so Mary declares, I have seen the Lord. God has come through. He is alive. He is, the, he is who he said he is. We really see it. Death has been overcome. Sin has been eradicated. This changes everything for all of us. Because of the resurrection, we can pray and have confidence that God hears us. Because of the resurrection, we can live right now our everyday life in view of eternity. Because of the resurrection, we know that suffering doesn't have the last word. Mary expected fully and completely a crucified friend. She expected a body in a cold tomb. She expected to mourn all alone. And in some ways, we are all a lot like Mary, aren't we? Even though we live in an Easter world, it feels like it's Good Friday most of the time. Maybe you feel like that. Man, it's all over. It's the end. Man, I'm at the bottom of the barrel. The, the bottom's dropped out. You're unraveling. And you just feel, man, it's just, it's just Good Friday. It's not resurrection. We've all been to places like that where we're convinced that all hope is lost. We're convinced. And, and we just kind of accept the inevitable. Like, I'll oh, just make the most of it. I'll just make the best of it. I'm so disappointed. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Maybe it's something in our marriage. I'll just make the most of it. Let's ride it out. Maybe it's something with your kids. Oh, it just is what it is. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's something in your health. Maybe intellectually you know, man, there's been a resurrection. It is Easter, but it just feels to you again and again like it's Good Friday, and you just can't get off of that wheel, just the same thing. Uh, and maybe there's others of you, and you feel like Mary, but maybe it's just a completely different reason. Maybe, to be honest, say, I've been trying to do the right thing, but I've never really, never really heard him call my name. Or he called my name once, and it was a long time ago. And man, I just, I just you know, Easter to me is about bunny rabbit and Easter eggs, Honestly, I'm here because the kids kind of begged me to come. It seemed like the right thing to do. They're going to have an Easter egg hunt. So, uh, you know, maybe it's just you didn't recognize when he called your name. Every day feels like Good Friday because you didn't realize that Easter had come. And it affects your everyday life. If, if you're here today and you're experiencing the unexpected, you've struggled to understand the resurrection, you thought at one time you heard his, him call your name, but, but now you're not, not quite sure, no matter where you are on that journey, I want you to, to look at this video about resurrected life of people that are among us, people that are just like you and just like me. Hi, I'm Hannah, and the Holy Spirit turned my life around, helping me find freedom. Hey, I'm Bobby. We should Two do years ago on too. Easter, I found purpose in Christ. 
Hi, I'm Aaron. Can, can you I found God's up, love reboot it? Thanksgiving event for the homeless. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Carrie. Obedience led us to bring Aaron into our home after the thing. I'm Hannah, and the Holy Spirit turned my life around, helping me find freedom. Hey, I'm Bobby. Two years ago on Easter, I found purpose in Christ. Hi, I'm Aaron. I found God's love through our Thanksgiving event for the homeless. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Carrie. Obedience led us to bring Aaron into our home after the Thanksgiving outreach. My past held me captive until the Holy Spirit intervened. The Holy Spirit has guided me through my darkest times, leading me to a freedom that I never thought possible. From wandering for years, I found myself at Cornerstone. It was Easter Sunday of 2022. I just felt the tug at my heart. That day I found Jesus. Since then, I've discovered my purpose in sharing Christ with others to see lives transformed, just like mine was. I was lost wandering through life until that Thanksgiving event. There, I found more than food. I found God's presence and a home. Through that event, I began to know God. His love became tangible, changing my life forever. Serving at the Thanksgiving feast was just the start. Little did we know God had a greater plan in store. Later that week, when God prompted us to open our home to Aaron, it was a step of obedience we couldn't ignore. Our willingness to obey his call that day opened doors for God to move in unexpected ways. Through my journey, I've witnessed God's resurrecting power. I have witnessed God's resurrecting power. I've witnessed God's resurrection power. We witnessed God's resurrecting power, continuously calling us closer to him. Jesus didn't come so you could exist and just kind of live life and make ends meet and just do the same thing. He came to give purpose. He came to give you life. He came, came to give abundant life, life to the full. Simply put, Easter means that nothing is impossible with God, that life triumphs over death, that love triumphs over hatred, that hope triumphs over despair and suffering in our life, does not have the last word. I think my favorite part of the story is when Mary heard Jesus calling her name. It's like when she heard her name, she could finally understand what she was made for, the purpose that she had. It all came together. Here's the reality. Jesus is calling your name. He's calling your name too. Yes, he loves the whole world. But he loves you. Like John, you're the person, you're the disciple that Jesus loves. Even before you become a disciple or an apprentice. He's calling you by name. Maybe like Mary, you think it's all over. And if you're like that, guess what? He's calling your name. Maybe you didn't realize that everything had actually changed. He is calling your name. He's calling you. He is pursuing you. And Jesus is relentless. He will not give up. Friends, today we celebrate the most important day in the history of mankind. It's the pinnacle of the divine story. Easter. That's what it is. It, it, it's the moment God came to earth. He came to this place and he went to the cross thinking of you. He came to the cross thinking of you. He paid the price for you. But Mary didn't simply hear her name either, right? She had to respond. She had to respond to it. Jesus is asking you, will you respond? He's saying today, will you take a step of faith? Will you respond to me calling your name? There is power in the name of Jesus, friends. There is love and hope and grace and mercy. You can trust in Jesus in your everyday life. I heard a pastor once say, if you were to die tonight and you face Jesus at the, at the gates, and he would say, why should I let you in to my home? And he said, if you begin with the first person, like, I did this, I had faith, I went to church, I believed, he said, you've already missed it. Don't respond in the first person. Respond in the third person. Because he did what I could not do. He accomplished what I could not accomplish on my own. He rescued me. 
He saved me from my sins. It's all about him. And maybe today, don't ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to enter his heart, to enter his. His story is way bigger and more beautiful. He's calling your name today. Don't merely think of Jesus uh, as some door to some life in heaven in the by and by, in the faraway place. Think of Jesus as the door to new creation possibilities right here and right now in 2024. Salvation is not just for some day. The scriptures tell us today is the day of salvation. That belief, that trust, that surrender, that really changed my life over 30 years ago. Salvation is for today. For the Christ follower, Easter is not simply a, a day in history that we celebrate. It, it's not even about a lavish celebration in the afterlife with him. It's an inauguration into new life right now. The kingdom of God is here. New creation and new possibilities right here and right now, wherever you are at. And I want to take this moment just to give a commercial to invite you back to the way of life. It's our series where we're going to be talking about the implications of Easter in your everyday life, every day. For the next month or so, we're going to be sharing about that. It's going to be a powerful series. I invite you to come back. We're going to put some, some real uh, feet to the pavement, some, some rubber to the pavement of what we've been talking about today. So take heart. We are Easter people in a Good Friday world. But God is not done with us yet. The cross is both hideous and beautiful. It is as hideous as sin, and it is beautiful as God's love. It's a collision of sin and grace. But Nate, make no mistake, they are not equals. They are not equals. The, 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 that, that collision, it's not an equal contest. Grace wins. In the end, love and grace win. Because Easter has come. Jesus didn't just say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. Not I am finished. Which means he has just begun. He's just begun a new work in you. And he's not going to give up. He carries that work on to completion. To the day of Christ Jesus. Would you pray with me? Please bow your heads. Lord, I thank you for resurrection life. I thank you that your kingdom has come. Lord, forgive us for these times where we've just kind of gone through the motions. Lord, where we, we haven't lived like nothing is impossible for you. If you're here today, if you're watching online, man, today is the day of salvation. And, and if you're here and you'd like to receive Jesus as your Savior, if you'd like to make him the Lord of your life, or maybe it's just to rededicate, man, it would be my privilege to pray with you. Anybody here, just quick raise of the hand and put the hand back down. I'd love to just say a prayer. I'm not going to single you out, not going to bring you down front. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Just say, I, 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 I want to be Lord of my life. I want to walk in resurrection life like we saw in the video. I want to I, I want to hear him call my name. Maybe that's you. You just, man. He's been calling my name. I hear it now, and I respond. Like Mary, I'm going to respond. We've got a, a QR code. If, if that's you, man, we just ask you, it's just your name, phone number, and email. I, I want to call you up. I want to give you some resources. I want to pray with you. I want to help you to begin this journey. I want to help you to get back on this journey. Let's just say a prayer, something like this. I'll pray for you, and you can pray something like this in your heart. Lord Jesus, I make you Lord. You are the boss of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make me new the way you made Mary. I, I hear you calling my name. And I just want to respond to you with a yes. I, I don't understand it. I, I don't, Lord. But I believe it. And I want to walk in it. And so I'm asking for you to give me your new life today. 
in a miraculous way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Again, if you're online or you're here, several of you raise your hands this, and hit that QR code, fill it out. Let us help you. All we want to do is, is come alongside you and, and help you walk this journey out. Will you guys stand with me? I want to say a blessing over you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. God bless you guys. You're dismissed. If you're Easter egg hunt, man, they're going to happen over here and over there. There's two of them. Go out, get your kids, take some pictures. We got a picture thing out there. God bless you. Next week, one service, 10 a.m. Hope to see you here. God bless you.
Jesus name Take real 